Hello, my name is Susan Mulholland, and welcome to Art Beat. March is Women in History Month, and this year there's a special emphasis on women artists. The first part of our show will be visiting Jennifer Barclay, a young Bucks County woman who is a clothing designer and who owns a shop in Frenchtown, New Jersey. And then we'll revisit some of the women artists that we've interviewed in the past two years. I hope you'll enjoy the show. Hi, I'm Jennifer Barclay. Welcome to Bluefish and the Hot Chili Pepper Party. We're having this party to celebrate the Southwest. We've opened a store in Taos this year and brought back a lot of jewelry and art from the area. And it's also just a party to have fun and thank all of our loyal friends and customers from the area. Enjoy. We recently attended Jennifer's Hot Chili Pepper Party last fall in Frenchtown, New Jersey. There was Dixieland music, popcorn, food, and fun. The entrance into Jennifer's store, Bluefish, sparkled, and her sense of fun and unique view on life could be felt everywhere. I enjoyed working with her models in such a festive atmosphere. The party was in celebration of the opening of another bluefish in Taos, New Mexico. Jennifer, I really enjoyed your hot chili pepper party. Um, that kind of reflects your personality, I think. The gaiety of that, the spontaneity, the popcorn machine, the music, the color. Um, you produce wearable art, but when did this fascination with, with wearable art or extending your art through clothing come in? How did that all begin? Um, it began when I was in high school, I suppose. I. I didn't want to just look like everybody else and so I began to make make clothing for myself and wear it and I would always get a lot of compliments on the clothing which was highly unusual and I guess a lot of people thought I was a little bit weird but uh, that's how it came about I just didn't see any fun happening in the clothing that people would wear not usually um, not many people had their own sense of style and I think with the clothing that I make now, um, it allows people more freedom to express their own style because I, I'm sure everybody does have their own style, but it's hard, it's hard to put it all together. And so you try to do that for them, or at least help them along the line. Well, I just give them the elements, and we help inspire confidence, and they're the ones who have to put it together but that's what we do. In my senior year, I began taking art classes at Bucks County Community College, and from there I went to Tyler. And then you studied abroad. And after my first year in Tyler, I went to Italy, to Tyler's campus there, and I studied there for a semester in printmaking. And I traveled quite a bit, which is where quite a lot of my inspiration comes from. Mm -hmm. Now, doesn't the Shad Festival have something to do with the very beginnings of Bluefish? The Shad Festival in Lambertville is what started the whole ball rolling, really. Um, I had made a couple of t-shirts and I took them and applied to the Shad Festival and when I got accepted I designed a fish, it being a fish festival. And I made a lot of fish shirts and um, after that every year traditionally I do the Shad Festival and design a new fish every year beginning with the Shad Festival. So the Shad Festival clientele gets the new fish first every year and we'll always continue to do that show because it's, it's, you know, it's a local thing and that's important. What is your business philosophy as far as what kind of shops do you want people to think of when they think of you and Bluefish? Is it called Bluefish in Taos? Yes. Mm -hmm. What do you want them to think about? Um, I think that when people think of Bluefish even now they think of a place where they can go and be comfortable um, and have a good time. A lot of our customers, most of our customers, come in and spend hours in here and are like friends, even if it's their first visit. They feel comfortable and at ease and they're 
they're allowed to try things on and play. We like them to play. That's really the atmosphere. Is your trademark really knits with print designs on them? For now, yeah. The, it probably always will be our trademark. Um, knits and t-shirt wear, I suppose. Um, all hand block printed in, in good colors. That's what people know Bluefish as, but that's not all we are. Yeah. And Well, this label that you've developed, that does that go on all your clothing? Mm-hmm. And it's, it has the date that it was produced? The large label that goes on the back, it goes on um, the more casual pieces. It doesn't go on um, a dress that you could wear at a formal occasion or a, out to dinner or something. Um, some people question my saying formal at all because some people would never consider wearing a jersey knit thing to a formal anything. But that's what we're trying to, we're trying to take blinders off people and say yes you can do this and just make them realize that there are a lot of possibilities out there that, that usually are overlooked. Um, back to the label. The label changes every year. We put that on our more casual garments, always on the back of the t-shirts. And that's good because it's just a, it's fun for people who own blue, Bluefish and know about Bluefish yes, to see to others. I have fun doing that. Mm -hmm. yes. And we get calls from all over the country, little Bluefish sighting reports, we call them, yeah. um, <laughs> when it's on television or on a movie or, you know, people have right. seen them all over the world, in Indonesia. Recently, a friend of mine who brought this fabric back yes, told me that he was in the hills in somewhere near Indonesia, and he saw three bluefish shirts during his travels. Just people hiking and people traveling, and they keep a big map of bluefish yeah. sightings <laughs> over the world. Put little red pins or something. They've just been everywhere, and and they're the kind of customers that enjoy our work. Um, people who travel and just are really happy, I think. I don't know, that's what I like to think anyway. The fun. Mm -hmm. Now this bowl of fruit ha is appearing on this dress. Will it be on other things? What other kind of things? Your sweaters and... Mm -hmm. We will print um, patches like this on various designs of dresses and shirts and even on, we'll print sections of it on sashes for some of our, our dressier dresses. It will also be printed on silk as a patch on our silk dresses and on the sweaters. Um, every time it's printed it's different because this part is hand painted in after. There's a there's a mono print then the black print then this is painted in. Um, and we're experimenting with various ways of printing it so it always will come out differently so each oh, piece will be different. This is beautiful. Well let's pull down, pull down this interesting silk piece. Now this is a, a pair of slats, right? This is a pair of pants. So it's pretty simple. I mean, they're very simple pants, but the color and the design is what's interesting about these. Um, it's a washable silk, and the print on here has been hand screened onto the silk. Mm -hmm. They they soften up tremendously with washing, and they're. Well, now how did you get this idea? This print idea. Th these are a sample from last season. Um, this print idea came from a an Italian Masaccio painting that I had a, a picture of. Um, it was just a small piece that I saw on the turban wrap of one of the figures in the painting. And I picked it up and reworked it. It's not as clean as it was in the painting because I've done carve I've carved it out and made it look a little bit rougher. Um, but that's where it came from. Describe the process that you go through in a very simple design. Mm -hmm. um, the block prints that I do currently for the clothing start out with just a, a regular block and then I take my carving tools and I usually have a basic idea of what I'm going to do just in a word. I, I try to come up with some kind of a... Circles or spirals. Uh, or some kind of a theme like last year we had farm Mm -hmm. tractors and little cows and uh, it was funny humorous cows not country cows so. but um, I usually have a theme in my mind when I'm going to start carving and then I just kind of make a line and go from there and then later and then after after the block is finished um, you have to wash it off to remove the residues and then you apply the paint and do a test print if that is fine and you don't want to make any changes, um, I take it to the studio and make a sample dress. 
which is you know placement and color for the particular color background. And as far as printing it into fabric, you know, you just put the paint on and then press it into the fabric. It's all done by hand. Tell me about this piece, because this is, um, well, it seems to me to be in the same kind of feel as the fruit bowl. Did you do this this year? I did this this year when I was in Taos setting up the store. I had grand illusions that I was going to do 30 paintings while I was out there, paintings on canvas, but I only got around to a couple of those. Um, so I did an addition of silk paintings to be used for dresses. We always have these dresses, and usually we do the block printing here. This is just something different. I do a few of these a year, and they're all one-of-a-kind pieces. And the colors are very New Mexico Yeah, feeling. they, they, um, they echo the, t the colors that were in the house that I lived in out there. Um, there were things, and they looked like this, too. They were so crooked, and that's how New Mexico is. It's really it's simple, and it's just how it well, is. Well, in this little pocket face. Yeah, that's... Just whimsical. It's just whimsical and silly, and it's nothing serious. Is it's that just, Jennifer there? Oh, With no. Pink no, hair? No. <laughs> you don't put yourself mm -hmm. in your designs, huh? And a little flower here. Okay, let's turn it around. Do you always put a back panel on your dresses? The patches on these dresses just are placed here and there and wherever at, at askew angles and here and there. So when you wear it and you're walking and you it's moving, interest. you see mm -hmm. these little patches of color. Mm -hmm. Um, this dress is great worn over a pair of turquoise pants. You like to layer things. Mm -hmm. You encourage layering. What about for the woman who goes to the office? Do you offer any wearable art for women like that? What I say to people who are concerned about what to wear to the office is that if you can't wear things that we have in the store, then get another job. <laughs> because if you're not allowed to have fun where you work, then why are you working there if you want to wear clothing well, that's a like very this? Good point. And yeah. that is the that is one of the major points that I want to make, and I can get very animated about that. Adamant. Um, it. I don't understand that personally. I mean, I understand that certain looks have to be kept, but then like in a courtroom, it might be a little difficult. Mm -hmm. But generally, usually people who work in places that have to have a, a uniform type appearance don't like this. Mm -hmm. uh, and people who like this have jobs that this works for. Mm -hmm. So that's what I have to say about that. Okay. <laughs> if I notice a lot of hats mm -hmm. and bags. and uh, So that's still part of your personal philosophy to um, carry through. Yeah. Hats are, hats are one of my favorite things. In fact, I usually have a hat on when people talk to me. Um, they're just, they're fun, and they're something that a lot of people have forgotten about, the hat. People come in and they have so much fun trying them on. They go over to the hat section mm -hmm. or the hat racks, and they're scattered. Try them on, and they're a different person. It, it allows you to be a character when you have a hat on. Um, you can hide. You can it. hide, and also it can mirror what you're really feeling inside. Um, when I put my hat on, it's like when, on days when I just don't even feel like thinking about anything, I put my hat on and I feel fine, because it's like, okay, I don't know, hats are special. Well, your apartment is also you, I and mean, it's just full of fun things. Do you, where do you find all these? I find most of the things I have in here at the Lambertville Flea Market. Um, as well as other markets. I drive across country quite often to Taos, so on the way I've picked up things as well. And many of the things I have in my house are trades that I've done over the years at craft shows with other artists. Now, I, the rocking chair hanging from the beam is just marvelous. <laughs> oh, I couldn't pass that rocking chair up. I saw it at the, the flea market, and it was $5. And the way the paint, I love peeling paint on anything old peeling paint and the kind of color it, it gives. So I bought it and I knew I would never get, get it recaned because I would never get around to it, so I just hung it out because I thought it was more of a, I thought of it more as a piece of art than a piece of broken mm -hmm. furniture. I asked Jennifer what she foresees for her future. I'm not just gonna be a clothing designer, that's really just a part of it. I feel that I'm an artist and um, the clothing design is part of it. It was the medium that allowed me to have a business so that 
that enables me to be able to travel, which inspires me to do artwork, which is the point I'm at now. And I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, I don't see it as one thing, though. I think I'm going to be doing a lot of diverse things. And I guess if somebody was going to the library and looking at my name, I don't know where they would have found it. But um, they, I don't know. I, I'll be known as a person who did a lot of crazy things, I suppose. <laughs> I enjoyed the afternoon that I spent with Jennifer Barclay, and I hope you did also. And now we'll revisit some of the women that we have seen in the past two years. I called each one of them to find out what was different in their lives and what they'd been doing in their artwork. And as you'll see, none of them was idle. Harriet Ermintrout, whose soft watercolor scenes capture a romantic view of Bucks County, has had paintings included in the 1989 and 90 calendars published by the Bucks County Conservancy. She's also done a painting to be in the catalog for the Peking China Medical College. Harriet travels extensively and she is never found without her sketchbook. Her planned trips to Alaska and Arizona are sure to produce many new watercolors. You can see Harriet's work in the current exhibit at the Coriel Gallery in Lambertville, New Jersey. The subject of Anita Gronendahl's serigraphy prints are quite diversified. Nothing seems to escape her artistic eye. She has done a typewriter and a piano, boats and flowers, Bucks County scenes and still lifes. She continues to be included in shows all over the East Coast. She won the Outstanding Work for Graphics at the 1989 Rittenhouse Square Fine Arts Annual. Anita supports other women artists by providing exhibition space in her barn studio several times a year and by sponsoring an art and garden tour every June. Catherine Steele Renninger has won prizes for her biscuit boxes at the Allied Artist Show in New York City. This show featured artists from all over the United States. She has also served on the 1990 jury selection for the National Society of Painters in Kaysen. Catherine was honored in 1988 during Women's History Month by the League of Women Voters and the American Association of University Women here in Bucks County. Catherine focuses on subjects which have been produced by hand.
Judy Heap has added a photographic dimension to her hand-cast paper artwork, which she was doing when we visited her. She has work on display now at the Rosenfeld Gallery in Philadelphia and at the Savannah College of Art and Design in Savannah, Georgia. Judy teaches high school art and an art education course for teachers at Beaver College. This gives her a chance to talk about creativity with students in order to develop an understanding and appreciation of the process inherent in us all. Zoon has become active in the movement for pro-choice in Bucks County. She continues to paint and exhibit locally. She is also coordinating a fine art show which will feature local women artists. Joan Lindley has just returned from New York City where she attended the 1990 National Caucus for Women in the Arts. There she joined with other women artists in discussions about the arts and the role of women in the current art movement. She continues to work in her Frenchtown, New Jersey studio.
Thank you to Jennifer Barclay for spending the afternoon with us, and a special thank you to all of the artists that we visited in the past two years, where they've shared their homes, their studio, their processes, and their love of art. Good night for Artbeat. Thank you.